Regina, Regina, did you know that a lot of people get their interior design ideas from going on their holidays? That explains it. I knew you spent a lot of time at Clacton. <laughs> we gave Chad Jackson the mammoth task of remixing Royal Britannia. That was three vodkas ago. So let's see how we got on, shall we? Chad, has it been difficult? Very difficult. I mean, Real Britannia is such a traditional song, you know, that, I mean, to bring it up to date to the 80s, put a couple of rhythms under it, I've sampled a couple of things, beefed it up, speeded it up, and tried to make it more 80s and more kicking. More so. kicking. OK, well, let's hear it for ourselves, shall we? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Chad Jackson with Real Britannia. Thank you. Do you know how the yuppies sell their houses? They put the coffee on, they put a loaf in the oven, and then they play classical music. Now, I wonder what would happen if they played the Fields of Nephilim. If they played the Fields of Nephilim, they wouldn't be yuppies, would they? Now, let's pick the breakfast, i.e. eggs, coffee, toast. Now, the kettle and the toast eat electricity. The electricity eats the money. In making the money, eats the time. Seems to be a lot of eating going on around here. Popular and refreshing. Something you could die for. Three, three. Oh, I never thought I'd be in the garden, I swear. Tea bag. No, I nearly died once. Oh, foo foo. It was this big long tunnel and it was really crowded with people. And then suddenly, there was this light. Oh, foo foo, what happened? It's a northern line. I waited 25 minutes for a tune. Comic artist Mick Matthews, or Mike Matthews, from Knockabout, and Tony Smith from Brain Damage are two illustrators who make violence funny. This is some of Mick's work here. As you can see, it is quite graphic. There. And this is some of Tony's work over here. Again, very detailed. And we've asked them here this evening to do a comic strip for us at Club X, which is going to be on violence, and the idea is going to be put forward to us by the audience. And at the end of the programme, we're going to come back and find out what they've done with it. So first of all, let me find three little people. Can I cut through? Oh, thank you so much, please. Right, there's anybody... Ah, yes. Can you think of a violent act which in no way do you think is funny? Um, rape, some sort of abuse to a woman. Right, abuse, sexual abuse, rape, right, rape, okay. Yeah. Um, some sort of national disaster, like a or Phil's breast. Uh, a national disaster, okay. Um, people with disabilities. Okay, right, oh, right. Right, so we've got rape, a national disaster, and some sort of physical disability. Now that's your brief, chaps. Oh, what a rush that was. Now, Nick, is there anything that you wouldn't do a cartoon about? Well, there is, but I'd keep it to myself, wouldn't show anyone else. So it's a bit like a closet cartoon, it would be? Definitely, yeah. Right, yeah. and you, Tony? Nah. Nah, all right, OK, then, get on with it. And, so this is what Mike's come up with. Can I have your opinions on the, our three volunteers? Did, what do you think of this one, please? It's colourful. Colourful? Um. You can all speak. <laughs> I think, it, I think they're great. I think it's all a, a, mean, a matter of interpretation, how the, the person that's reading it interprets it. I think that's the issue sure. that's involved. I, 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 don't don't I think it depends sort of what sort of comics they're actually in, whether it's for children or for adult comics like well, this. I think it's obviously for adults. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, what do you think about the comments about this so far? Uh, <laughs> well, were, were the original intentions meant to be shocking or...? Well, it was just your... It was just well, your... I think mine are excellent anyway. I think yours is wonderful, Tony, as well. Like, you're a top illustrationist as well. <laughs> Cheers, we all know. You. That's right, my dear. And with, yeah. and with us, we have... Um, <laughs> do you remember who it is now? We have Ms. Dr. Martin Marlowe, a junior psychiatrist at a London hospital, who deals in his clinic with violence every day of the week. Now, Martin, let's psychoanalyse sick jokes and blue and black humour. Blue, black and blue humour. What and why do people laugh? at tragedy? Well, it very much depends on the person in the situation. Um, 
for example, a person who tries to then they make an apparently sick joke <coughs> on the basis of trying to defend themselves against fear or anxiety and running in the opposite direction into humour. So why do people, what do they get out by magazines like this? Well, I think, as um, you said, it's, it's difficult to draw concrete conclusions about individuals, but humour is a way of connecting with other people uh, on the basis of a common sense of humour. And more subtly, um, people can convey unconscious, aggressive or sexual fantasies in a coded way. And maybe the difficulty for um, cartoons is about what is an acceptable level of aggression and what's an acceptable focus uh, in humour. Well, to me, this always seems like a bit of like a um, schoolboy humour, like saying knickers behind the bike shed, you know. Um, <laughs> is this what it's really basically about? It's sort of like um, adolescent humour. Um, well, the images, they're strong images, they're raw, and they're often provocative, and that would appeal to um, a male adolescent, perhaps, um, looking to challenge the limits of social acceptability. Okay, Martin, thank you very much. We've got to run out of time now. Thank you.